Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be covering what we went over for lab 7 last week when I had jury duty. So bacterial transformations, P. glow plasmid series. I'm going to go ahead and read the intro with you and give you some extra notes first. Okay, introduction. Bacteria. Okay, so transformation of E. coli with plasmid DNA. So when you write your introduction for this lab report, this is the main concept. So this is where you want to provide your background information. So you want to talk about transformation, maybe define what the word means um, in your own words, and then continue talking about E. coli and the plasmid DNA. So introduction bacteria, and to some extent simpler eukaryotic cells such as yeast exhibit some seemingly strange properties. One of these is the ability to acquire, through various routes, extraneous DNA. Plasmids are very important extraneous DNA molecules which are passed between bacteria. These circular, autonomously replicating DNA molecules usually carry one or more genes that can enhance the phenotype of bacterial cells. So here we have a circular DNA molecule so we'll say that that's a plasmid and they normally carry one to two genes so that's kind of like how they pass superpowers to each other so here um, we have two genes and so for example bacteria can just pass these plasmids so if one bacteria has antibiotic resistance to um, like ampicillin for example because that's what we use in this lab then they could just send the gene that gives them the resistance to ampicillin on one of these plasmids to another bacteria and now the other bacteria is also resistant to ampicillin so it won't die if it comes across it okay so transformation is a process in which cells take up foreign DNA from their environment under appropriate conditions. A cell that is incubated with plasmid DNA can absorb the plasmid into its cytoplasm. A plasmid is usually a small ring of DNA separate from the chromosome that is often found in bacteria and yeast. So we can say that this is a bacteria and then this is the chromosome, chromosomal DNA and then the plasmid would be right here. So a plasmid is usually a small ring of DNA separate from the chromosome that is often found in bacteria and yeast. Plasmids can function as vectors to shuttle genes into and out of cells. Expression of genes on the plasmid would then alter or transform the genotype and phenotype of the cell. Okay, so if the bacteria accepts the plasmid and then starts expressing those genes, then it has become transformed. Transformation can occur in either prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. In today's experiment, we will transform a harmless enteric bacterium E. coli with the P. glow plasmid. So we are using the P. glow plasmid. Transformation of cells with DNA is a very inefficient process. So as you can see, this is a transformation and it's an inefficient process. Only a small fraction of cells in a liquid culture will uptake DNA and become transformed. So if we have 100,000 cells, only one of those will become transformed. If we have 200,000, two of those, 300,000, three of those, so that's why the process is inefficient. Because our goal is to isolate the transformants, we need a way to separate the few transformants from the majority of untransformed cells. This is accomplished through a process called selection. Okay, so that process is selection. When we try to separate the cells that were transformed with a plasmid versus the cells that were not transformed. 
The most common means of selection occurs through the use of antibiotics. As a rule, plasmids contain genes that confer antibiotic resistance to their host cell. For example, E. coli is sensitive or killed by an antibiotic called ampicillin. Ampicillin interferes with the formation of bacterial cell walls. So that's how ampicillin kills bacteria. It interferes with the formation of the bacterial cell walls. Um, and so newly divided cells that must form new cell walls die. The peat gloat plasmid contains an ampicillin resistance gene. This gene encodes an enzyme <coughs> called... Oh, sorry, that's my dog. Okay, so the pigloplasmid contains an ampicillin resistance gene. This gene encodes an enzyme called beta-lactamase, which enzymatically degrades ampicillin. So that's how the bacteria E. coli will become resistant to ampicillin because the gene encodes a protein that is called beta-lactamase, and that enzyme will enzymatically degrade ampicillin. Therefore, bacteria that take up the plasmid or the transformants become resistant to ampicillin. So this gene we can say here, we'll continue annotating our little um, picture. So this gene right here is going to be the ampicillin resistant gene. Let's see. Yeah, the ampicillin resistant gene. Okay, and it encodes for that enzyme, which is beta-lactamase. And then the beta-lactamase is the one that degrades the ampicillin, and that is why the transformed E. coli will be able to destroy or degrade the, penicil the ampicillin. I don't know how to spell it, but we just read it, so. Okay, so then we can keep reading. Therefore, bacteria that take up the plasmid, or they're also called transformants, they become resistant to ampicillin. Okay. When a culture of bacteria containing both transformants and untransformed cells is exposed to ampicillin, the transformants will survive, but the untransformed cells die. This procedure, this produces the desired result of isolating transformants away from untransformed cells. The p glow plasmid also contains the green fluorescent protein gene. Okay, so remember, a plasmid can carry one or two genes. So this one has two. One that helps the bacteria, the transformed bacteria, become resistant to ampicillin, and the other gene allows it to express green fluorescent protein. This gene, which is derived from the jellyfish called Aquaria victoria, encodes a protein, a fluorescent protein that glows green when exposed to ultraviolet light. The peat glow plasmid also contains the arabinose promoter. Okay, so it contains the promoter. It's the arabinose promoter. A promoter is a short region of DNA that regulates the expression of a gene. In other words, the promoter determines whether the gene will be turned on or off. Okay, so this gene can be turned on or off. The arabinose promoter controls the expression of the GFP gene in the plasmid. So if the promoter, the arabinose promoter is off, we should not have expression of GFP, and so we should not have fluorescence. But if the arabinose promoter is turned on, we should have expression of the GFP gene, and we should have fluorescence. When arabinose, a simple sugar, is present in the growth medium, the gene is expressed. So all we have to do is, if, if we want to have GFP fluorescent expression, all we have to do is add this arabinose simple sugar to the media. If there is no arabinose simple sugar in the media, that means that the 
Arabinose promoter is going to be turned off and the GFP gene will not be expressed. And so we won't have uh, fluorescence. Okay, after completion of the selection process, you will be asked to analyze the results of the transformation experiment. In other words, did you successfully transform E. coli with the P-glow plasmid? You will also be asked to analyze the expression of the green protein gene by exposing your cultures to UV light. Proper analysis requires the use of both positive and negative controls in the experiment. Positive and negative controls are reactions carried out under controlled conditions that tell us whether or not the experiment is working and provide a reference for comparison with the experimental reaction. The nature of the controls for this experiment will be self-evident as you proceed. So yeah, we're going to have a positive and a negative control and I'll go ahead and explain those. So, okay. These are the preparation steps. Okay. Okay, so these are not the results actually. These are the experiment. So since your lab was canceled. My second lab went ahead and did the experiment for you and this is exactly what they did. Um, and they actually did a great job because everything came out beautiful. So here we go. We had four dishes and we went ahead and poured some auger in there. And in dish number one we poured LB auger, and that's just the food for the bacteria. We also had ampicillin, which is the antibiotic that kills the E. coli bacteria. And we also had the peat glow plasmid. And remember, I should redraw the plasmid here. Let's see. Okay, so the plasmid is the circular piece of DNA, um, and it usually carries about two genes. So in this case, we had the gene that gives you resistance to ampicillin, and we also have the gene that codes for the GFP protein. Um, and this is called the p glow plasmid. Okay. So for dish number one, we had LB auger, which is food. We added the ampicillin and the peat glow plasmid. Okay, for dish number two, we added the LB auger, which is the food. We added ampicillin, which is an antibiotic. And we added arabinose, which is the simple sugar that turns on the GFP promoter. And we also added peat glow, which is the plasmid. Now I'm actually going to try to highlight the plasmid for you. Okay. And then in dish number three, we just added LB auger, which is the food, and we added the ampicillin, which is the antibiotic that kills the bacteria. And in dish number four, we added the LB auger, which is just food. So we have bacteria and food here. So what are our expected results? Okay, so let me go ahead and grab my black pen. Okay, so in, we'll start off with dish number four. This is a control, and this is our positive control. So, okay, so in dish number four, we only have food and we have bacteria. So what are our expected results for this plate? Well, the bacteria have a lot of food and there's nothing to kill them so we are expecting them to be super happy and we're expecting them to just grow everywhere nice and beautiful okay so we're just expecting lots of bacteria whoops so they would just be little dots um mine are coming out bigger and weirder because it's hard with my, um, I'm having to do this with my finger, so just bear with me. Okay, but that's what we're expecting for dish number four, LB auger. So this is our positive control. Now, dish number three, we have auger, so we've got food, but we also have ampicillin. So the our expected results here 
are nothing. All of the bacteria that we put in here will die because of the ampicillin. Okay? Now, for dish number one, let's go here first. We have auger, LB auger, so that's the food. We also have ampicillin, so that will normally kill the bacteria. But we also have P glow. We have our plasmid. And the plasmid has given our cells, our transformed cells, the ability to be resistant to ampicillin. So what we're expecting here is that these cells, these E. coli cells, the ones that received the plasmid, so one in a hundred thousand, those that survive, they will be able to survive the ampicillin. So they'll be resistant to it. And then they will be able to eat the food and they'll be able to grow. So we are expecting some colonies here. Okay, and now the last dish we have LB auger, so that's food. We have ampicillin, that's the antibiotic, and we have arabinose. It turns on the GFP promoter, and we also have PGLO. So here we have all of the elements. So we have not only do we have the plasmid, but we also have arabinose which is the simple sugar that turns on the GFP promoter. So here we are expecting GFP to be expressed, which means that we will have fluorescence. Actually, let me draw these in a different color. We're going to expect green fluorescent molecules. Okay, so that's what we're expecting here. Okay, so these are the transformed E. coli where the promoter is turned on. Okay, so we are, oops, we are expecting, disregard those like lines and giant blobs, basically. We're just expecting fluorescent bacteria, transformed fluorescent bacteria. Okay, I hope all of that made sense. And then now, um, that's basically all we did. It was a pretty simple lab. And then today in lab, I let you take pictures of our results. So in our LB ampicillin plate number one, we expected like a little bit of growth. And that's what we got. We got a few colonies here. So you can see that. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Um, okay, let me stop drawing. Okay. Okay, so these are actually colonies. So this is a colony here, this is a colony, this is a colony, and this is a colony. So we did have some growth, and that's great. Um, for dish number two, we were expecting fluorescent, and that's what we got. We have transformed fluorescent colonies. For dish number three, it was our control where we were expecting nothing, no growth, because the ampicillin killed the bacteria. And that's exactly what we saw. We saw no colonies. And then for dish number four, um, we were that was our positive control, and it was just bacteria with food. So we were expecting a lot of growth, and that is what we observed. All those, like, the fact that this is opaque, like all this opaqueness, that was um, a lot of growth. Of bacteria so um, make sure to thank your colleagues for you um, because they did a wonderful job for you okay so now we can talk about your report okay for your lab report I'm gonna be sending you an email with instructions on what sections you need um, this is the simple anna sample annotated lab report that Dr. Dulai has on CAT courses. And here's, in case you have to do like a title, you definitely want to have your title. And then if you have to do an abstract, this is a beautiful um, introduction to an abstract. The first sentence summarizes the introduction. So ours was about transforming you know, transformation um, using a plasmid. So you want to talk about that. 
just one sentence. Then you summarize the methods. So we used um, LB auger plates to grow E. coli. That was like our method. And then we purchased a um, plasmid with two genes. So, you know, you one sentence about that. Um, and then you summarize the results in one sentence. So um, we, our results were great. Uh, we had a positive control. We had a negative control. They were great. And then we had a fluorescent transformed E. coli at the end. So, uh, and then you summarize the discussion. So, and then that's it. So the abstract is really short. And then let's see. Okay, for the other sections, this is the notes that I had for you. So for the intro, this is the scientific concept that we're studying. So in this, for this lab, it will be transformation. So then you want to provide some background about, um, so this was for lab five. So we said about cells and talk about membrane example and stuff. But in this lab, it's going to be talking about transformation using plasmids. So like the first paragraph, like, you know, four or five sentences about that. Um, yeah, and then right here, a second short paragraph is where I like to start. In this lab, we, so you can talk about specifically what you did in this lab. So you um, transformed E. coli, right? So you want to be specific with your stuff. So you transformed E. coli. That was the bacteria that we use because there's a lot of other bacteria, but you want to be specific. And then which plasmid did you use? So you want to use the name of the plasmid and maybe talk about the two genes that the plasmid has. And then you want to tell me what method you used. Um, so we used uh, LB auger plates to grow the bacteria and perform our experiments, right? Um, and then we want a, a hypothesis. So don't forget your hypothesis. What do you hypothesize is going to happen? Or what do you hypothesize that you're going to see in which dish, you know? Where do you think um, you will have fluorescence? And then you want to give me the rationale for your hypothesis. For example, in this case, it would be like, oh, we had all the reagents that were necessary to, um, you know, and then tell list like, tell me what each, each reagent was for in that dish that you're hypothesizing will give you um, fluorescent E. coli, transformed fluorescent E. coli, okay? Now, for the methods, from for the rest of the semester, the professor wants us to um, write a sentence, you know, refer to the lab 002 manual, and then tell me which lab it was. So for this one, it will be seven. And then you, we made the following modifications to the protocol. And then you would just list the modifications or you can tell me them in um, a paragraph format. But for you, since you weren't there, you can just include this information and then tell me that your lab was canceled. So um, your colleagues actually made your plates for you, okay? Now results. So here, um, some student, most students are doing wonderful for the results, but some students are still trying to put explanations in this section about like why those were those results or whether or not the hypothesis was correct or not. Like that information does not go in here. Results is only results. And your first sentence should summarize the overall results. Okay, so... And then you can go ahead and talk about each of the four dishes, um, like specifically what did you observe, okay? So one thing that I like to um, point out in the results section is the size of the colonies. So in plate number four, which was our control, the colonies look super tiny. It's just like tiny little dots. But in plates number two and number one that receive the peak glow plasmid, the size of those colonies are huge compared to these colonies. So um, yeah, you just need a paragraph in the results section, like a nice paragraph explaining exactly what you're seeing. And that's it in each plate, okay? Now in the discussion, this is where 
you have a nice um, topic sentence again as usual then you need to state whether your hypothesis was correct or not and it's okay to have an incorrect hypothesis you can still get an A it doesn't affect you at all all you have to do is say my hypothesis was incorrect um, you know I thought that this was gonna happen but instead this happened and then explain like explain what happened um, okay so according okay so then yeah you explain all the things that could have went, went wrong but for you guys since you weren't there you don't really have to talk about that and really nothing went wrong there was everything was perfect so you can talk about again you can talk about like a couple of the dishes you know like the controls maybe and like how um you know the positive control like it had bacteria growing all over it and that just showed that your e coli was healthy and alive and then your negative control was um there was no bacteria so that showed that your ampicillin was strong enough to kill e coli which is exactly what we needed because the day before you guys on monday the ampicillin was not strong enough um they didn't put enough i think and none of our bacteria died all of our plates had bacteria so for you guys i had them change it out and that's why your results came out perfect okay so according okay so now once you talk about that in your discussion one part that a lot of students miss and this is where a lot of your points are missed is how do our lab findings compare to other studies find a good reference for this not wikipedia and just give me like a couple of sentences so you can actually talk about other labs who have used this same plasmid so you can just google like the name of this plasmid and then like if you can find any kind of statistics about like how good it is you know has it been tested in other other types of bacteria besides e coli is it really good how does it compare to other plasmids in the field are there any other plasmids that can carry three or more genes you know this one only has two genes or what about uh, you know how this one has green fluorescent protein uh, what if there was like another plasmid that has like red fluorescent protein or other other colors so like you you can only pick like one of those questions and give me like two sentences on that question and then you can write like a sentence about what was the significance of the results um but that that's not like a big deal i really want you to look for this um and then that'll be it now if you do these things you should get full points on your report um i think i touched on all of the sections oh yeah i forgot okay so we're having issues with um the flow chart there was a lot of copying and pasting of the protocol and then a lot of students put it in like boxes and we can't have that because it's still considered plagiarizing because it's something that you're turning in and the whole point of a flow chart was for you guys to like write it out or draw it out or type it out not to copy and paste the steps because it defeats the purpose like you're when you write it out like you learn the protocol so from now on what i'm going to ask all of my students to do is draw out your flow chart so use this example okay so you can draw your little things and then just annotate you see how they don't have like all of the steps written like step by step let me see can i flip this over okay so this is perfect okay so try to model and this way you don't have any chance of plagiarism there's zero chance of plagiarism if you draw it out and then just upload a picture okay all right so if you have any more questions you can email me um, but besides that i think you have all of the resources that you will need um, to write an excellent lab report